So I'm talking with Dr. V. K. Liu, uh, the former minister, the prime minister's uh, department in charge of legal affairs from uh, 2018 to 2020 under the Pakatan Harapan government. He is also MP from Sabah and the permanent chairman of Party Warisan Sabah. So thank you, Dato, for coming to my podcast. Um, thank you. Today, Professor I want to talk to you. Thank you. So I want to talk to you about MS63. Uh, you were in charge, basically, of uh, issues related to MS63. As you know, under uh, Prime Minister Mahathir Mohamad, he set up a federal uh, level cabinet committee uh, to deal specifically with MS63 issues. Now, can you tell me about the work of the committee? Because I think just before, uh, before February, uh, you held a press conference and you mentioned that most of the outstanding issues were resolved, but there were four contentious issues. And I think the four contentious issues uh, mainly deal with the oil and gas uh, issues. But the other issues that were resolved, uh, it is my understanding, and I could be wrong, uh, they deal mostly with decentralization issues. So I'm just wondering from your perspective, uh, is this the right way to go in resolving the grievances of many people in Sabah and Sarawak? Okay, uh, let me start by explaining the three committees that had been set up so, during my time as the Minister in the Prime Minister Department in charge of law and as well as parliamentary affairs. What happened was that uh, we set up the, uh, the first uh, committee, we call it the uh, Special Task Committee, consisting of the Prime Minister as the Chairman, as well as the Chief Minister of Sabah and Sarawak, and the AG of uh, Sabah and Sarawak plus the Federal AGs, with all the uh, Cabinet Minister, relevant Cabinet Minister in the, in the committee, plus all the high level ranking uh, officers from all the three states. And the second committee is a technical committee. The technical committee is chaired by me uh, together with the federal AG, uh, consisting of the uh, federal AG, the state AGs, plus some MPs uh, from respective states, and then also high-ranking officers. Uh, before, below me will be the working committee. The co working committee consisting the same group of people, but it's just that they are the working committee that deal with the uh, preliminary works and the matters that need to be resolved before it comes to the technical committee. And then when it comes to the technical committee, we will decide these are the issue to fine tune them before we bring them up to the, uh, what we call the steering committee, the main committee. So it has been going on uh, since 2018. It was set up in 2018, December 2018, right? And then we went on to, until the last year. We completed the report on uh, August 31st because that was the time. It was six months and then we got extended time until 31st of August. And then the complete report was given to all the respective parties. Right? So at the end of the report, we have agreed that there were 21 issues. Right? 21 issues, I think this has been uh, widely, uh, widely reported in the press. And then we have only four pertinent issues that need to be uh, resolved between the three wise men, I call them. The three wise men, namely the Chief Minister of Sabah, Chief Minister of Sarawak, and the Prime Minister of Malaysia. So you can see this uh, special task uh, committee is of high level. So the three wise men are the ones that will sit down and decide on the four issues. I think the four issues, namely on the Pemberian Hasla, right? The special the amount of money that needs to be settled. And I, for a fact, knew very well that uh, by January this year, the amount had been given to the Prime Minister for con consideration. So they were supposed to make the announcement sometimes in February <laughs> this year. And they come to all that kind of things. Amount had been agreed upon. And I think the most difficult issues that had to be dealt with is with regard to the territories issue. Territory seawater, as you know, Professor uh, Malaysia, uh, was governed by the British and the territory of Malaya, uh, Singapore, uh, the, the Borneo state were all drawn up maybe well before we got independent during the British time. And you know that uh, in between the uh, West Malaysia and the, the uh, southern parts of the Borneo, which is Kuching, in, the, in between there's an island, a few islands that belong to Indonesia, yes. Adana Island. Mm. So, uh, so that territorial uh, water things and then the block M, block L with Brunei has also become 
uh, uh, contentious issues. So I set up at that time during the community stage because uh, both the tripartite party, lah, Sabah, Sarawak, and Malaya, they had problems of resolving these issues because uh, they felt that uh, the territorial issue cannot be touched because it has already been drawn. But of course, Sarawak want it to be redrawn. It's all about, you know, what do you think they want to redraw the whole thing? Because of the oil field thing, lah. Right, uh, this one is inside me. It's like, like you know, it's not your your part and things like that. But then we have uh, Indonesia in between, and then we have Brunei also. So it's quite a complicated issues that need to be uh, dealt with. Not only between these three uh, territories, but also between the Brunei and Indonesia. So I set up what we call the tripartite uh, committee, consisting of these three personality that federal AG, the state AG, or Sabah and Sarawak. So they sit down and they, 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 at the end, they came with the conclusions that they cannot agree. They agreed to disagree on these issues. So I kept, submitted the whole report to the uh, Prime Minister plus the, the, the Chief Minister. So hoping that they will resolve the issue themselves. These are the three wise men issue. Mm -hmm. And, and, and as, 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 they had said they wanted to go to court and things like that. See, but I said going to court uh, will not solve everything because uh, there will be a losing party and the winner and things like that uh, will not be good for the country. So I said, please resolve it. And then uh, they come up with certain suggestion and they gave the report to the Prime Minister, plus the Chief Minister and of the two states. So that was uh, as late as uh, January this year. And other than that, uh, the other issues, uh, the seventh issue, of course, it covers, uh, as you said, uh, you know, decentralization of the uh, uh, certain uh, departments uh, like the, the education, health, and then, uh, of course, uh, electricity also, they have decided to give it back to Sabah, mm. the SESB, and that sort of thing. So everything was well in progress. And then uh, the Prime Minister had wanted to make a special announcement but well, as to when, this is a political timing. Lah. So they will have to decide on that particular time. But now, uh, everything has been uh, changed with the new government and they set up a new uh, portfolio called the Minister in Charge of Sabah and Sarawak under Dr. Mm -hmm. Maximus. So I don't yes. know what is that all about, lah, you see? Yes, yes, mm. yes. He but can I... actually just, just uh, take up what we left off with the four issues and then let the present government deal with it. But now with all these issue going on, I don't know how Moedin is going to handle it. Sure. Can, can I just be, be, be uh, very blunt and say that because the work of the committee was never completed, some of the issues that was brought up... No, 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 up... you, you, can, you cannot say it was not, not completed. I had completed the works. A report has been submitted. Mm. Okay. Uh, mm. A few hundred pages of report that had been submitted to the Prime Minister and to the Chief Minister of Sabah and Sarawak, in fact, to all the respective parties in the meeting of the Special Task Committee, they all have a copy of the report. Mm. So all works were done. So you, you But they haven't given you the feedback yet, right? My understanding is that the Sarawak government never give you feedback on the report. Well, you see, their understanding at that time was that the, the, the issue that had been agreed upon, there's nothing else to, to talk about, isn't it? Because you have agreed on the issues. So the only four issues that need to be settled, and the, as I said, the three wise men had met several times over this. And, and I said also that, uh, you know, it's only the Pembrian Haas uh, that need to be resolved. And they had come out with the amount of money, right? So that one is uh, privy to all of us, uh, because... Uh, the sure. when, you said, when you said they on the amount... You said that this amount was agreed to by both the Sabah and Sarawak state government together with the federal government. Is that what you're yeah, saying? Yeah, they, they gave the amount to, to the federal government, to the prime minister. And okay. this is what we want, you see? Yes, yes. So yes. In, fact, in fact, from the very beginning, our Professor Chin, uh, you know, we had a good start in the meeting because uh, we came to the agreement that, you know, why the issue concerning dollar and cents, right? We all can sit down and discuss, you know, how much you want, how much I want. You say, oh, you, 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 you uh, took my money since the 60, 70, 80, uh, right? So you have not given us, so 
this side is saying, okay, we agreed uh, that has been done. And then we want to know how much you think that we should give back to you. So we sit down over the period of time, you say, to calculate on all that. So they came up with the figure. It's already been uh, concluded, the figure. Mm -hmm. Then we give it to the boss. Boss, this is the amount I want. Can you, uh, can you uh, agree to it? So they were dis dis negotiating on that. So the basic principle, everything had been agreed upon. It's just how much you ask, let's say, lah, I'm just giving an example. You ask for $10, okay, maybe, maybe $5, lah, or maybe, no, lah, maybe six, five is a bit, like, you give me more like that. So it's, it's negotiating. So I think uh, our Prime Minister at that time was uh, very uh, amicable. And then, and I can see that uh, the three uh, wise men were very wise in their decision. They all said that, uh, you know, okay, dollar and cent, no problem. We can, we can, we can, we can deal with it. Hmm? Okay. Now, as you mentioned, the other four contentious issue, one is about the territory uh, borders and that has got to do with oil and gas resources. And um, all that, yeah. Yes. Not so only since, oil and gas, but I think territory, you know, sure. this is my land, this is your land kind of thing. Like, okay? Yes. All right. Uh, so since you said there was no agreement that the three ages got together, they agreed to disagree. So something like that, how do you move the process forward? Well, I think as I said, you see, they had come up with uh, recommendations and was given to the uh, three wise men. So they were supposed to come to some form of uh, understanding as to how to, how to deal with this particular issue on the territory issue. So they were going to make some uh, announcement after the meeting in January. In January, if I remember, uh, after that, of course, we have the Chinese New Year. And the meeting we had was in the early part of January. Okay, in the early part of January, the last meeting we had uh, to to conclude on the uh, on the uh, special task committee on MS sixty three. Okay, and that is the name given. And then the, we sat down, and then the, we resolved to dissolve the committee. And then. The, uh, at that time, then we, I also set up, I said, if we dissolve the committee, it, will, it doesn't mean that work will not continue. So a special monitor uh, force was, given, was, was set up yeah, to monitor the whole thing. To implement, uh, to monitor, you mean the implementation part? Uh, yeah, the implementation part. After the dissolution of this particular yes. committee, because it has to be dissolved. Uh, because we have uh, star, uh, paid staff, you know, working staff, personnel are uh, working in that special task committee when we set it up. And then Bayou at that time was the secretary and things like that. So money was expended and things like that. And you must remember the MOF at that time uh, was very, uh, how you said, uh, you know, was very cooperative when I asked for money <laughs> to pay for this special task committee, three committees, you know, all needed to pay them for the special answers, uh, task force and things like that, I think came to about a couple of millions uh, uh, for a period of about, I would say, just under 12 months like that. You know, so it was paid and then they, uh, 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 you know, and that uh, now that uh, what we have to wait, and then unfortunately, new government came in, the whole thing destroyed. Because, and if you remember very quickly, when I came in, in 2018, you see, I have my own set of agenda, you see. And then I thought uh, of the foremost important at that particular time was to ensure that uh, we get the amendment to the Article 1, bracket 2, first of the Federal Constitution to make Sabah, Sarawak, and uh, you know, the Federation of Malaya on the equal footing first. So once we are on the equal footing, then we talk about the rest, you see. Hmm. But, but as then, you know, course, that amendment fell apart. The, yeah, exactly. the, the Sarawak did not support and they, and they claim, uh, I'm just repeating, uh, they claim that they did not support it because even though they told you they wanted to amend it, you refused to do it. That is a, a lot of uh, rubbish, you see. Uh, okay, if I remember, it was on the 9th of April uh, 2019 when we brought the matter to the House for amendment. So on the 8th of April, it's, we had, I had resolved everything with them until the 8th of April. At 6 o'clock in the evening, while I was sitting down in the Dewan, in my office, there came uh, this uh, Fadila. And Fadila came and told me a letter to say that this is from the GPS. 
right? And they said that they wanted to include the word, you know, pursuant to Malaysian Agreement 1963. Malaysia was their formula, blah, 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 blah. So they wanted to add pursuant to Malaysian Agreement 1963. So I would say the six magic words or the five magic words. That was at six o'clock, six, seven o'clock. So I have to quickly act and then the only person that I can contact at that time as the advisor to the government is the federal AG. He advises me. He advised the government of the day. I asked him and then he quickly have a look at it. Then he said that, uh, you know, he set up the committee over the night because the matter would have to be uh, tabled the next day. I would have to stand or rather the prime minister would have to stand in the house to read the uh, usul and the second reading already. Mm. So I have to amend the speech and everything. So we quickly look into it. And then the federal AG advises us that, uh, at that time, advised the government that uh, the six words need not have to be in the main, uh, main article, but it can be in the explanatory note and it can also be in the tone speech in the second reading as the government policy. So we, we all uh, uh, work to that and then they kind of agreed and disagreed. You see, the problem at that time was that a GPS uh, man person, uh, the current chief minister, uh, Abang Jo was not a member of parliament. Mm. So he has to rely on this uh, Padilla and also Petrajaya, who was that? their fellow. And then, uh, uh, but of course, for Sabah at that time, uh, uh, our pri chief minister Shafi was also the member of parliament mm. in uh, from Semporna. So he was in parliament at that time. So I, I can deal with him directly. And then we were talking and things like that. And then, uh, uh, if I remember correctly, I had also spoken to Abang Jo directly on the phone. Mm. Right? Mm. On the phone, what did he say to me? He said, uh, you know, I wanted this because my father was there in 1963 to sign it. He wanted it to be there. And I said, if your father wanted it to be there, why didn't they ask it then? You see? Why did it bring this up? Why did you have to bring this up 50 years later, you see? When it was, if they think that it was so important then, you see? You know, then why now? And then they had the opportunity to do it in 1974. Why didn't they do it? You know? So to say that I refuse is a blatant uh, lies. And they were the one who make life difficult uh, by saying that they must include this. And uh, Professor Chin asked Abang Jo again now, uh, just a couple of months ago, he said now, it is okay. I, I don't want uh, the word, the six magic words to be in the constitution anymore. So what is Abang Jo doing? He's, he is playing with the with, with politics and the sentiments of the Sabahan and the Sarawakian, isn't it? By saying now that it is okay. So, but, but, early, but early on in your discussion, this is way before April, early on in your discussion when you met the Sarawak, AG and the Sarawak government, they did give you a list of other amendments they wanted done, right? Yeah, they wanted the uh, one, one is list of amendment 106, mm. article 160, yes, yes, yes. and things like that. And then I said, you might as well amend the whole constitution. Mm. If that is what, you see, I think the agenda now, we are just looking at article 1 first. Just make Sabah and Sarawak and Malaya of the same putty equal quality. You want to bring this, you want to bring that, they want to talk about education, they want to talk about health, they want to talk about this, everything. And it's just basically finding fault with the whole thing and making life difficult. But now the picture is clearer with Abang Jo recently stated that in the newspaper, I think just about one month ago or two, uh, to say that he is now okay with the amendment. So I want to ask Abang Jo, you go and ask him, why do you, why do you make life so difficult back in, in uh, April, uh, 2019, mm. which was just about one year ago. Mm. And now after one year, you say it's okay. When we can try to um, um, uh, get your consent, things like that, you see on the nine, okay, after mm. Tun had done the, uh, the, 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 uh, the official text, right, the speech and things like that. And then uh, uh, we, he, we, he was supposed to send up to answer questions. And, and then we drag on, we were supposed to do that at about 8 p.m. 8 p.m. 
And then uh, uh, Fadila came to see me. He said, I, he said, you know, Abang Joe still did not want to agree with this unless these six magic swords are inside the main uh, Article, Article 1. 1. You see, yep, yep. That Malaysia is made pursuant to Malaysian Agreement 1963. Mm. And the AG said, tak boleh, tak boleh, tak boleh because these are not constitutional words. And then he said that if you want to put that in, we also want to put in the separation agreement with Singapore. Because Singapore separated from us in 1965. So if you're going to put all that in the main constitution, it will, it will make it very, very, un, very unlike a constitutional wording because they were all the constitutional experts. And then the AG is the advisor of the government. I have, who else do I listen? I have so many advice coming in, but the only advice that I can accept at that time is the advice of the AG of the country. I cannot accept your advice, Professor Chin. I can listen to it and then what? But the proper advice has to come from the AG. So okay. AG said... Let yeah, leaving leave, leave that to one, one side, the other reason why the amendment fell, of course, was that AMNO and PASS voted against it. Why was there no support from the uh, AMNO and PASS to support that? Exactly. Like you this? see, if I remember correctly, at that time, at that moment, you see, after the, the 8 p.m. tune was supposed to go up and then uh, do the winding up, right? Mm. And then after that, uh, Fadila came to see me and then I quickly bring him to see tune. And then at the same time, I also brought the Seporna, uh, our CM, from Sabah to go and see Tun. And then at that time, YB uh, Tuaran also was with me. Uh, so the mm. three, three of them, plus Tun, plus me, they, we were all in that room discussing. And I even picked up the phone and get them to speak to Abang Jo. Mm. And they also got the AG to be on the phone. So they talk. They all talk, 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 talk. Tidak boleh. Cannot, uh, you see, because that the Tun has to take the advice because he said, we can accompany it, we can set it in the speech, it's a policy speech of the government anyway. That Malaysia is made pursuant to Malaysian Agreement 1963. There's not an issue on that. You know, it's an understanding. We all know that. Uh, it's already been in the explanatory note. It's in the government's uh, policy speech. It's in the hands art and all that, you see. But Abang Jo said, no, 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 no. My father this, my father that. Uh, Abyss, we stuck with the whole thing and then... Uh, yeah, but we, why, we, why, why did Amno and PAS support this when they knew okay, that... Okay, now it, after that, after that, uh, this is the most interesting part. Uh, so during the block voting, uh, we saw the GPS busy discussing with PAS, busy discussing with Amno, and then they decided at the end to abstain. Why were GPS wanted to discuss with uh, PAS and uh, Amno when it was about Sarawak? You know, why did they want to discuss with PASS? Why did they want PASS to come in? That's what I want to know. At that moment, I saw all these GPS MPs were all discussing. We were in front, but so easy, mm, you see? Mm. While we had the broad voting, you know, after that, they abstain from voting. They abstain. It's not that they did not vote. They abstain. Mm. Uh, they, they throw away their vote. And then uh, it was because they have decided with PASS and up no to deny the Sarawak and the Sabah that equality, which is very important because the uh, pro, I cannot uh, really, uh, you know, uh, throw my cards away and then, you know, let everybody see it's a political gamble, you see. So uh, it's, it's very important that uh, we, I thought we should get this thing done and then the rest will fall, you see. But uh, unfortunately, now they can see it. Now they can see it when we are having all this uh, talk about uh, the enforcement of the MCO and that sort of thing into the respective states. Then they realize it, you see. Is there an, any political appetite now under the new PN government to go back at amendment? Because before the, the change of government in late February, I remember you made an announcement that you will try again. Is there, is there enough political I appetite? Have, I, I would have tried again. You see, whether you like it or not, bro. Uh, you know, you have to know that uh, the person who carried it, the minister concerned, nah, mm. whether he has the passion or not for it, you see. And I come from the Borneo set. I have the passion. I, I don't know about this current minister now, nah, whether he, he has that passion or not. He's right? also Sabahan, no lah. The matter had to be brought by the Minister of Law, Minister of Parliament. Yeah, but the Minister in charge of Sabah and Sarah Affairs surely will be discussing this with the Minister of Law. I mean, that's his remit, isn't it? Since he's, he has a special yeah, portfolio dealing with... Yeah, but at the end with... of the... 
at the end of the day, the one that we carry the paper to see the Prime Minister, and that uh, we go to the day one, is the Minister of Parliamentary Affairs, the Minister of Law. From right? past. So it's, exactly. You ask him whether he wants to break it in. And during my time, so I want to ensure that uh, the 13 additional seats uh, from Sabah would also be approved by the House. And then I did it because uh, uh, if it has been any other minister, they will not be probably so compassionate about it, isn't it? You don't remember the 13 seats? Mm -hmm. The 13 seats, uh, additional seats, we had 60 seats in Sabah. Yes, yes. yes. Okay, the 13 seats uh, were added on and then uh, uh, that was during uh, the former chief minister time. It was approved by the Sabah State Legislative Assembly. And after that, it was supposed to be tabled in day one uh, during Najib time. But Najib at that time that did not want to bring it in because uh, there was this talk about not getting the support from this 13 settler, mm -hmm. the 13 additional seats and things like that. So they shoved it into the corner. So when I came in, I looked at it and things like that, hey, this is something that uh, needs to be done and we only need the approval of the Prime Minister. Okay. Well, anyway, I'm just asking your professional opinion, having uh, done this portfolio and you know most of the members of Parliament, is there an appetite now to pass this amendment if the new government tries for another round? The appetite has to come from the minister in charge and also the appetite of the prime minister, right? I think we in Sabah, of course, uh, would want to uh, continue to have this uh, agenda. I think I still have the appetite, but I don't have the power to bring it in. Mm. And as to uh, how they want to play it, I think uh, the Sarawak uh, GPS have a lot of explanation to do. Why did now they said they allowed the six magic words, uh, pursuant to Malaysia Agreement 1963. Why do they want this now and why did not they want it in 2019? Why after one year they have a change of mind? Isn't that wasting everybody's time? Isn't okay. that... Uh, okay. La la last question, Dato. Given that the fact that you know the PH government tried to address this issue, it was also in the in the Buku Harapan, which is the list of promises. Sabah and Sarawak was one of the five core pillars. Given all these things that Pakatan was doing, uh, why are the people of Sabah and Sarawak still unhappy about federal state relationship? Well, I think it goes uh, beyond the what we have understood now. I think uh, if you look back what happened in 1960s, 70s, uh, 80s, 90s, and now, I think still I believe the regional imbalances, right? We are not balanced. Uh, we are not equal. It comes to education, it comes to health, it comes to the facilities from the federal, it comes to distributions. All these things were not equal. So how do we make it equal? So first and foremost, and I thought at that time, is that to get the mothership done first, uh, to get the law done first. So once we have the constitution the issue resolved, right, then we deal with the rest. Uh, you know, but you mentioned that one. your committee, the, the committee, uh, the MACs, they actually, you know, they came up with 17 basically you say agreed terms yeah a lot of it decentralized once it decentralized will things get better if the if it is implemented by this government i'm just saying going forward well i think uh, i think uh, decentralization of certain uh, matters are uh, of utmost uh, uh, you know uh, considerations from the people in sabah and sarawak especially those people in sabah mm. uh, we want to make sure that uh, we are in charge of our own uh, uh, on affairs, you see, even uh, when it comes to health, you see, the health issue now that uh, with the COVID-19 and things like that, uh, the central government come out with this uh, bulldoze and say, that, oh, you must follow us, you see. But luckily... No, my question know, is that if the government implement the work of your committee, the one that you completed, will this, uh, what do you call it, make the people, uh, not to say more weary, but will, will this mean that the people will be more satisfied with federal state relationship or you think it doesn't make a difference? It's about us political sentiment. I think sentiment. if they implement what we had said in the report, yes. Because there are a lot of things that will be beneficial to the people in Sabah and Sarawak. Mm. And I was hoping that uh, the report will be made known uh, to the uh, 
people to the public uh, uh, you know during the course of this year but unfortunately we have this uh, change of government so we do, i do not know whether the new government we want to make use of the report or not mm. so you have to ask uh, the minister in charge of sabah and sarawak yes. that particular question. but you, sure? you see this is the this is the thing you see we want to have parliament sitting i want to ask him this question whether he's going to use my report or not but mm. then the present government is denying our right you know from asking all these questions all right that's all if i were to ask you to summarize in 30 seconds what is the way forward for federal state relationship specifically putrajaya kuching and putrajaya kota kinabalu what is the way forward given that you know a lot of people are unhappy about federal state relationship what is the way the, forward the the way forward is for us in sabah and sarawak to recognize one thing that we Sabahan and Sarawakians are part of Malaysia, right? And we are continue to be uh, enjoying this uh, sun under the Malaysian flag, and that we will continue to work together to ensure that uh, we progress together. And to do that, we must be equal. And to do that, regional equality must be abolished, and that we can move forward as one. And I think once we do that, uh, we we have a greater height in the country. We have a better futures. Okay, sorry, sorry. That was not the last question. So the last question is that if you if you said that you want regional uh, equality between uh, say Putrajaya, Kota Kinabalu, and Kuching, then then the question is what will what will stop Johor, Terengganu, Kelantan states with a very strong regional sentiments? What will stop them from asking the same deal? They can also go to Putrajaya and say you, you, you give you, the you deal must... to Sabah, Sarah. Why not give to us? You must not forget that uh, the definition of the Federation of Malaya. Is consisting of these 11 states. Okay, so these 11 states against us, Sabah, and Sarawak. So we are a territory, Sabah is a territory against Federation of Malaya, which is a territory consisting of 11 states. Mm. So basically, it comes back to history how the Federation of Malaysia was established. You are the expert in this, Professor. So. <laughs> So thank you very much, Dr. I think uh, I think you have covered most of the things I wanted to cover, and also you covered it in 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 some detail. So I think it's really important.